Good morning, North Lakes. He is risen. Yay! <laughs> and uh, this is indeed a happy resurrection day. Easter can mean so many different things uh, to different people. Uh, similar to Christmas, sometimes you have to make a special effort to emphasize the true meaning. And so there are a lot of uh, things that have maybe been incorporated into Easter celebrations from other uh, historical uh, pagan or other uh, belief systems, you know, with the egg and with the rabbit and fertility and all that stuff. Uh, and so sometimes uh, people may only think of the chocolate and the egg hunt or the extra vacation day, right? Everybody's, you know, traveling, uh, going to see people, see friends, go camping, uh, whatever it is. Uh, sometimes that is the only thing that gets focused on if we're not careful. And so we have to remember, this is the Christian's biggest, most important weekend to worship together. Without the crucifixion of Jesus, we're still condemned. And without the resurrection of Jesus, we are without hope. So today, we're going to take some time to really soak in and celebrate God's plan of salvation as we celebrate Easter. So first, we have to go back a few days before the resurrection. It was a Thursday evening. Jesus had just shared the Last Supper with his disciples. He knew he was going to be betrayed. He knew he was going to die the next day. And so what did he choose to do? He chose to bend down and wash his disciples' feet. He chose to serve them in preparation for his own sacrifice. Uh, even Judas, who he knew was going to betray him, was loved by Jesus and served by him. Then later, they went out to the Garden of Gethsemane, and they prayed. And he especially prayed intense prayers, asking God, crying out to God to spare him from the coming torture and agony that was required for God's plan. But he submitted himself to the Father, out of love for us, wanting us to be saved. And so he said, not my will, but yours be done. And then he was betrayed by a kiss and the soldiers came and arrested him. And in the chaos of the moment, Peter swings a sword and cuts off uh, the guy's ear. And even in the midst of that violence and that surprise and that ambush, Jesus reaches out and heals the man's ear. He allowed himself to be taken away and to be falsely accused. Ironically, the one thing he did admit to in this uh, jury, this nighttime illegal trial, was actually true. The one thing that he actually admitted to was true. He admitted he was the son of God. And so they spat on him. And they pulled out his beard and they beat him with rods and they condemned him to death. Later, they turned him over to the Roman soldiers and they took their turn whipping him. And they had something called the cat of nine tails, which had leather straps with pieces of bone and pottery attached so that it cut deep into the back of those that they were whipping. And Jesus endured that. And then a crown of thorns was put together and placed on his head. And that was beaten down into his skull with rods. And finally, he was forced to carry the cross beam down the Via Dolorosa, the way of suffering. And then on Golgotha, the place of the skull, they nailed him to the cross where he died. One of the last things he said 
was, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they're doing. They don't understand what they're doing. Even in suffering in to the point of death, he was thinking of us. He was thinking of those he was dying for. He carried the weight of our sin on the cross, and he paid the debt that was owed because of our sin. Earlier in his ministry, he proved his identity over and over as the divine Messiah, signs, wonders, through his character, his love, through fulfillment of prophecies. Jesus was the Son of God. I mean, even the centurion there at the cross recognized that Jesus must be a God of some sort, just by the way he died and the circumstances around his death. Influential friends took Jesus' body down from the cross and laid him in a tomb. It was late, and Passover was about to begin, so the women didn't get a chance to do a proper burial on Friday. So early Sunday morning, they returned to the tomb to finish the job, to finish putting all the burial spices in the tomb around the body. But the tomb, they found empty. His grave clothes that they had wrapped around Jesus were empty. The face cloth was set to the side. Jesus was gone. And the appearance of an angel confirmed that God had done something amazing that had never happened before. And over the next 40 days, Jesus visits with his disciples, and at one time even 500 people, eyewitnesses of Jesus being alive, resurrected, and they touched him, and they saw him, and he ate with them, and he had a new, immortal, physical body, and so they spread the good news, and they were even willing to die to tell this truth about Jesus. So what about us? Today, I want us to walk away with two important truths. Number one, how you answer the question, who is Jesus, will change your life. If you believe that he is the Christ, the Son of the living God, as Peter confessed, and you make him your personal Lord and Savior, you will, first of all, you'll be saved, and then you'll be changed. It will give your life purpose. Your past sins and your mistakes will be covered by grace. Your gratitude for being saved will fuel your service and your love to everyone around you. And so the question then remains, number one, who do you say Jesus is? And the second thing I want us to walk away with today, this truth, is when you do decide to follow Jesus, you will become more like him. And so we have to ask, what was he like? Well, as we've seen over and over, as we even look at just the week of his uh, death and his burial and resurrection, he was humble. He was a servant. He submitted his life to God. He was loving and he was kind and he was merciful. He was compassionate to those who were hurting. And yet he always told the truth. And really that's what got him in trouble because truth exposes the lies and people don't like their lies to be exposed. And so they killed Jesus. And so if you and I decide to follow Jesus, we may suffer for following him and standing up for the truth and and sharing the truth just as he did. But that's okay, because no one can take away what God offers through his son, Jesus. His grace and his salvation is something no one can take away. Eternal life is given by God to those who follow Jesus, and no one can steal that. But when we follow Jesus, we become like him. And today, we just want to invite you to participate. 
Uh, now, if you were at the center, you would actually have several experiential stations uh, to really immerse yourself into this weekend of Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection, and then celebrating together. So if you're there at home watching and you want to experience a few of the uh, Easter stations, maybe right there at home, uh, here's a few things you can do. First, maybe uh, fill up a bucket or a backpack with uh, really heavy rocks or objects. Uh, maybe, you know, shoot for, oh, I was about to say pounds, but 80 pounds, I don't even know what that is in kilos. Maybe 40 kilos. <laughs> anyway, a really heavy load. And I want you to see how far you can carry that. Or maybe hold it straight out in front of you and just see how long your arms can hold up that weight. And as you feel that strain and feel the muscles struggle with that weight, I want you to imagine Jesus as he struggles to carry the cross down the road and up the hill of Calvary where he would be nailed to the cross. And just imagine even the weight of all the sins of mankind that he carried to the cross. He was sinless. He was perfect. He was pure. And yet he took on and became sin so that we could be saved. Another thing you could do is uh, uh, have your own communion time. Uh, get some juice and, and some crackers and, and take some time and just meditate on the Last Supper and think about, as we've been talking about, this new covenant that Jesus said was going to be established by his blood and his broken body. And then think about uh, how he gave himself on the cross and and that agreement that he was going to return and someday we will have another last, I guess it will be the first supper maybe, instead of the last supper. It'll be the next time when he comes again and think forward and think through the new covenant. Another idea, you can grab a journal, uh, just some scratch paper or something where you can start writing out a prayer of thanks, a prayer of gratitude for what God is doing in your life. Thank him for covering all of your sins. Uh, thank him and confess uh, those areas that you need to get right and take time to really just pour that out and get right with God and, and uh, just humble yourself before him in a way that's really personal to you and uh, express that uh, maybe through a drawing or, or a poem or some form of uh, uh, something you can keep later and look at and remember. And then next, go to your spice rack. Grab a few that uh, you like. Uh, maybe it's cinnamon or cloves or uh, something like that. And take time to smell them. And as you do, remember that moment as the women uh, go to the tomb and Jesus is gone. They smell the aroma of the spices that they had they had started, uh, you know, on that Friday night to put spices on his body. But they were coming to finish the job and they had all these spices. And let those aromas in your kitchen remind you of the hope of the resurrection, the empty tomb. Instead of an aroma of death and rotting flesh, we have the fragrance of life through Christ and remember uh, the empty tomb and the hope that it brings. And then last but not least, play some worship music, take some time to celebrate, sing uh, some songs to worship God. If you were not able to worship with uh, a congregation this week, Please take time to maybe gather a few of your friends and family or even just by yourself and uh, and sing Happy Day or the Easter song or was it a morning like this or even the old classic Up from the Grave He Rose and let it fill you 
and let it remind you of the hope that we have, the celebration we will have, and will even now proclaim this Easter. God bless you guys, and I will see you next week or the week after that.